I'm Walter Schwabe, your host of Gov2TV. Welcome to another episode. You know, today we're going to talk about communities. We're going to talk about engagement. Actually, engaging communities online is one of the most difficult things you could possibly look to do. And today I'm joined by special guest Adriel Hampton, who's the chief organizer of NationBuilder.com. Hello, Adriel. How are you doing, man? Hey, good to be here, Walter. Doing well, thanks. Well, let's get right into it. Uh, you know, for those of uh, the folks that are watching live and uh, on demand later, if you haven't heard of Nation Builder, you guys have been generating a whole lot of hubbub about uh, who you are, what you do, but let's give them the, the quick rundown of what Nation Builder is. Yeah, absolutely. So, Nation Builder is a platform for organizing, and it's designed to bring together uh, a whole bunch of different activities that folks who are organizing on and offline need to do. So, things like uh, being able to do uh, online phone banking, being able to uh, take credit card donations, being able to blast email and uh, text folks, and also being able to launch websites. And what really um, kind of differentiates it, other than bringing all those things onto one platform, is that we have a fully integrated uh, CMS and CRM. And for folks not familiar with those terms, the CMS is a content management system like a, a WordPress. and a CRM is a customer relationship management system, something like a Salesforce. So we put those things together and we actually have um, made up a new acronym for them, uh, the COS or Community Organizing System. Well, okay, so that now let's let's take a look at this. Now, as you know uh, really well, the, the topic of uh, discussion on this show is typically around open government, uh, Gov 2.0, where government integrates new technologies to improve business process. How does Nation Builder, or does it, uh, fit within the government space, and what kind of work is being done there now with your guys' platform? So we have some, um, we have the, I guess, one of our government customers that's interesting is the uh, Parliamentary Committee on Social Tourism in the UK. They're using Nation Builder to get across um, news about social tourism in the UK, to publish reports, uh, to help people keep track of their meetings. Um, a lot of our customers right now are in the political and nonprofit spaces because they're folks who know they, they need to organize. They also need solutions that help them quickly get up and running without a lot of technical support um, and, and without having to have custom development, uh, which is usually required for this kind of, of work online. Um, we are working, I can't name names yet, but we're working with one uh, really big mayor's office on uh, helping them do their volunteer programs through Nation Builder. Uh, we're also uh, talking to a company that does a lot of work with local governments about having them being uh, kind of a channel for Nation Builder. So we're very interested in, in governments using us. Um, you know, I'm sure a lot of your guests uh, talk about the uh, difficulties there are with, with um, speed of procurement, uh, agility to use consumer type solutions, being able to use uh, SaaS cloud solutions. Uh, it's something that I became very familiar with in my time in government before joining Nation Builder. Um, so I, I think it's a very good solution for uh, like a mayor's office of neighborhood services, right, where they have to do a lot of constituent management. They're managing a lot of volunteers. They may be doing a lot of events. Uh, all of that stuff is really well integrated into Nation Builder at extremely low prices. Um, but uh, so I'm looking forward to, to government using the platform more and more. We're only six months old, so seven months. So let's talk a little bit about then the, when, when working with government, often, uh, you know, there's firewalls to deal with, obviously. There's privacy. There's uh, all sorts of issues on security. And, uh, you know, typically government IT departments are hypersensitive to any new platform being brought into the ecosystem that they've set up and are, are uh, you know, supposed to be managing every day. How does, uh, you know, obviously I have to assume you guys are a software as a service uh, setup. So how, how do you work within those kind of tricky environments? Yeah, I think one of the, the big things um, about Nation Builder that's somewhat unique, especially for folks who are, um, you know, maybe looking at um, 
more centralized platforms like uh, Facebook, you know, and, and having struggles over privacy and security. Um, Nation Builder um, is uh, the platform, but each Nation Builder customer uh, has a totally distinct uh, identity, a totally distinct identity management system um, within the platform. So no data is shared uh, between our customers without them choosing to share it, for example. Um, so it's, it's very much um, like using any kind of cloud database solution. Um, so, so probably similar to, you know, the, the things people are approaching around uh, maybe using, um, you know, Google Apps as a, as a solution. Uh, the only difference there is we don't do any advertising. Everything is, our whole model is based on pay for service. Um, not on on advertising to uh, customers or uh, any kind of resell of, of information that comes in. Well, let's talk a little bit about the fact that you don't pay for advertising, and yet you've gotten uh, quite a bit of uh, attention. Obviously, on your <clears throat> website, there's a number of uh, organizations you list there as having covered you guys. Uh, what has uh, been the one of the keys, or or more than one of the keys, to your success in terms of getting the word out? Uh, obviously, if you're a company that's designed to help others engage community, you probably should be pretty good at it yourself, and clearly you are. So what are some of the keys that have been uh, to your success there? Well, one of the things is, so, you know, my title is, is chief organizer at Nation Builder. A, a lot of companies hire, hire salespeople, they hire marketing people, we hire organizers. You know, when we um, hire someone to work with our customers in the UK, or we hire someone to work with our customers in Canada, will be hiring organizers, so not people who, um, you know, just can can give you a line and sell you a product, but people who are good at building communities, who are good at uh, telling stories, who are good at um, getting those stories um, um, across different media channels, for example. So uh, I actually met the founder of Nation Builder in 2009 uh, when I was running for Congress. And he was working on innovative solutions for doing democracy online. Uh, and we've kind of kept up since. And, and when he was looking to expand his company, that's that's when I jumped in. Um, so I think that, um, you know, we use social media personally. We're personally, uh, most of us are, are very uh, activist oriented. Um, so we also use Nation Builder as our platform as a company, which I think is, is interesting, you know, very much the... Um, the, uh, I think Microsoft brought uh, eating your own dog food into the tech world nomenclature. Um, you know, we use things like uh, Google Apps and social media and uh, Nation Builder itself to manage uh, our interactions with people and to, um, we use our own blast email system, for example, to let no folks know uh, when we're going to be in town for a conference, you know, and let's get together and have drinks or, or things like that. Really making sure that we're building a community around our company. Well, let's talk a little bit about some of the successes to date. As you mentioned, you're six, seven months old now um, in, in terms of the uh, your current iteration. What, if any, success stories can you share with uh, our audience uh, in terms of, uh, you know, organizing and building some communities? Are there some websites that you can point us to? Yeah, definitely. I mean, we had one really early success. It was nice to uh, to see two of our uh, alpha customers, actually the, the two customers who were um, paying customers during our alpha period before we were open to the public, um, the Scottish National Party in the UK and uh, Alex Torpy, who was a, uh, basically a mayoral candidate in South Orange. Um, they both won their elections, and that's uh, it's alextorpy.com. And then um, I believe it's snp.org, although they may have moved it. It was sometimes uh, the sites are very fluid because the, uh, the campaigns, you know, whether they're in or out of season in campaign mode. Um, but the Scottish National Party actually had their largest uh, victory in uh, their 77-year history uh, with very adept use of the Nation Builder platform and using the social media integration that's part of it to kind of identify and convert um, supporters who were not yet party members. And then Alex Torpy, um, who was elected to village president, he uh, was actually written up in Inc. Magazine as um, the social media mayor and gave a lot of credit to Nation Builder, which was really cool. 
Um, in this last election cycle uh, in the U.S. in November, uh, we, we saw um, a, a nice uh, selection of candidates winning their elections. But some of the most interesting were things like um, a young man named Derek Dobies, who won uh, his election in, I believe, Jackson, Mississippi. Um, and then uh, there, was a, there was a couple of guys uh, in their mid-20s who won their first elections, and uh, one of them even came in first uh, ahead of the two incumbents who were running, which is just incredibly impressive. So we're seeing folks use, because Nation Builder is so inexpensive, it's like starts out at 19 bucks a month um, for smaller campaigns. And so what we're seeing is people using it in municipal elections to organize really well, and then winning in, in elections where, you know, 50 votes is the margin of victory winning those elections, which is which is fun to see. So let's talk a little bit about the barriers. Obviously, cost is not one of them. But let's talk uh, quickly about, uh, you know, any barriers you see to the business model or the opportunities going forward. What do you see there? Well, I think that um, one of our big challenges, so eventually we'd love to be like the WordPress of organizing, you know, to have not, not thousands of people, but hundreds of thousands of people having their own nation builder accounts and using them to organize in communities. So basically anyone who has, um, you know, a popular podcast or who is trying to build a platform for their, um, their, their cover band, uh, or, um, so it's, it's very much not just for candidates. It's for folks trying to build communities online. Um, in that, I mean, WordPress has a, a massive head start on things like, um, plug and play themes, right? We have, uh, a, you know, a much a, a small selection of official themes. We have a lot of folks designing on the platform and doing some really cool things. Um, if you want to look at a, an interesting site, is schoolchoiceweek.com. Very nice, nicely designed site. But right now you do have to, you know, if you want to do a lot with the platform in terms of the design, uh, you might have to hire a developer or a designer. Um, so I, I see really one of the things that's going to be key to our growth is folks designing and selling um, custom themes on the platform and uh, learning how to scale that, right? We have um, about 300 folks actively using the platform now and uh, expect to continue to grow very quickly. Um, and part of that's going to be having, having uh, designers contributing back to the community. Just quickly, what kind of platform is it built on in terms of uh, technology? So it's a Ruby on Rails app, um, and we uh, for the theming side, for the, the public sites, we use um, the Liquid uh, theming language, which is an open source uh, theming language that allows you to do a lot of uh, conditional things. Like, so we have a lot of flexibility um, to display certain activities, whether or not someone's logged in, to change the look of the, of the theme and the template based on which page you're on uh, within the theme. Um, and a lot of that's uh, powered by Liquid, but it's also um, just basic HTML as well as uh, sassy CSS. Right um, on. Yeah, so not everybody is is up with 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 the uh, S CSS, um, but when people start getting going on the platform, they really like it a lot. I mean, we've got one of the cool designers working on Nation Builder is uh, the folks at Liberal Art, which is a small uh, design shop for high-end, um, mostly political, but also progressive nonprofits. They're out of D.C., and they actually did Hillary Clinton for President's website. Uh, they did Act Blue's website, uh, and they're big fans of Nation Builder, which is a lot of fun. Well, Adrian, uh, you know, thank you so much for being on Gov2 TV today. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've been uh, just tuning in here, I'm speaking with uh, Adriel Hampton, the chief organizer for nationbuilder.com. Adriel, again, it's great to, to speak with you out of uh, the San Francisco area. Uh, hopefully the next time you're up in the Edmonton area, you can uh, come and say hi to us in studio. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you again for tuning in to this episode of Gov2 TV. I'm your host, Walter Schwabe. We'll see you next time.